Who am I? At some point or another, most everyone has asked themselves this question. If you took part in the activity in Box 1.1, there is huge variety in the answers you could have given. You might have listed your family role or your job title. You might have described your personality, your hobbies or stated demographics such as your nationality, religion or gender identity. You might have written your name. The ability to reflect on who we are is something that makes human beings unique from other mammals. In the same way that you don't have to understand how the respiratory system works to breathe, selfhood is automatic for most animals. For humans, however, the question, who am I, is one that anthropologists believe we've been grappling with since our days as hunters and gatherers. Yet there remains no universal definition of the self, nor is there an agreed consensus about what exactly selfhood is. Still, the concept of self and the theorising around it has shaped disciplines ranging from theology to biology to political science, to name a few. As we will learn from this chapter, the literature on the self is vast. It spans thousands of years and covers what feels like just as many perspectives. In this book, we take a specific view of the self. Drawing on the field of social psychology, we examine selfhood using the social identity approach. But before we delve into this view, we will spend this chapter touching on just some of the different perspectives of the self from Western philosophy and psychology. We will then consider modern beliefs about the self, that is, true self-beliefs, and how these influence our thinking and our behaviour. Importantly, the conceptual frameworks provided in this chapter will help to set the stage for the rest of this book, where we will be thinking about the self as a function of identity.